Hello everyone, I'm Tanya Rivero. CBS Evening News will begin in a moment. But first, moments ago, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell set up a key procedural vote on Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court. Joining me now for more details on all of this on the phone from Washington is CBS News Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes. Nancy, um, can you explain exactly what Mitch McConnell just did there on the Senate floor? Sure. What he did is known as filing cloture, and what it means is that he has set the Senate up to take a procedural vote as early as Friday morning on the Brett Kavanaugh nomination. Um, so senators would have a chance to read the FBI report tomorrow. McConnell said that the senators will be um, able to look at that report after it comes over to the Senate, which he thinks will happen uh, late tonight, Wednesday night. And uh, then he says that's enough time for them to take this procedural vote on Friday. And assuming that all goes well for the Republicans, that would then mean that the Senate would take a final vote on Kavanaugh's confirmation on Saturday. So are all the senators expected to receive the FBI report tonight? There won't be staggered reports where the Republicans get it first and then the Democrats? So the way that it's supposed to work, uh, according to congressional aides, is that uh, to minimize the chance of leaks, essentially all the senators are going to have to go to a secure room in the basement of the Capitol on Thursday if they want to read this report. There's only going to be uh, one or two copies available, and they will have to go to that room in shifts if they want to read it and have it explained to them uh, and get a briefing by uh, aides who have been especially deputized to, to provide the information. So, um, you know, this is not the kind of thing where each senator and their aides are going to have a chance to, to take a copy and peruse it. Um, they are going to have to go to this one central facility if they want to take a look at the report. And that is uh, because there are a lot of concerns that um, if this report was disseminated widely, that senators would immediately begin leaking details that were um, – you know, that, that supported one side or the other. It doesn't mean that that's not going to happen. It could still happen, but, um, but at the very least, they won't have the document itself and be able to, to leak entire portions of these FBI interviews. But Nancy, won't that make it take uh, much more time? I mean, if there are only two copies and each senator has to go in and, and read it one at a time, I mean, that's going, especially if they have questions and especially if it's a long report, that could take far more than a day. Sure. I mean, it's definitely a more laborious process. What it sounds like these senators are being encouraged to do is to get there on the early side, and they're even going to be um, sort of dividing things up hour by hour. So there'll be like an hour where the Republicans could go uh, check out the document, and then an hour where Democrats could go check out the document. And keep in mind, it actually may not be all that long after all, because uh, it sounds like the FBI has been pretty strictly curtailed in terms of who it could interview. And so um, it may be that the uh, FBI at the end of the day only interviewed about six or eight people. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that is the case, then there won't be all that much information for these senators to digest. The White House has been pretty cagey when asked directly about whether it has tried to restrict the FBI's activities. Um, sometimes White House aides will say, um, you know, no, they have free reign. And then other times White House aides will say, well, but actually we're relying on the Senate um, uh, and the Senate Judiciary Committee to tell us who they want information from, who they think should be interviewed. And so, um, uh, you know, it's really unclear at this point how, uh, how much free reign the FBI has had in terms of doing this investigation. Are we expecting to hear a revolt or at least an uproar from Democrats tomorrow morning when they see the report and they see that Christine Blasey Ford was not interviewed, that several people who they believe would be interviewed were not interviewed. Are we expecting that to happen tomorrow morning? Sure. I mean, they are already very frustrated. They've seen the writing on the wall. Uh, they know that both Christine Blasey Ford's attorneys and Deborah Ramirez's attorneys have uh, provided lists 
groups of up to 20, even 30 people who they felt should be interviewed who could buttress their their case. Um, that hasn't happened, and Democrats have been very frustrated. But um, what Republicans will say, and what they've been saying all along, is that Democrats are simply trying to drag this process out. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that that this FBI investigation took place, the fact that Christine Blasey Ford was given a chance to testify in the first place, uh, those are signs that the Republicans have tried to be accommodating and that Democrats uh, will never be satisfied. So, you know, those are the kinds of arguments we've been hearing. We'll hear them again. Um, But what really matters at the end of the day, Tanya, is how the very small number of undecided senators feel about it. Do they feel that this is a legitimate investigation? If they do, uh, then there will be no pressure to do anything more. If they don't, then, um, you know, then then Republican leaders are going to have some difficult decisions to make. Right. I'm thinking of Senator Flake here who called for the investigation in the first place. I mean, if he if he expresses dissatisfaction with the FBI report, could he ask for more? Could he say, I won't vote until this is more extensive? He could, although he was asked about that directly. And he said that he didn't necessarily feel that Christine Blasey Ford or Brett Kavanaugh needed to be interviewed. He said, we pretty much already know how they uh, feel. We know what they think happened or didn't happen because they testified for hours before the Senate Judiciary Committee last week. Um, Now, certainly uh, FBI investigators could try to tease out more information and inconsistencies in their stories if uh, they had the opportunity to talk to them. But uh, the reality is it sounds like there are a lot of things that the FBI could have done, mm-hmm. um, but wasn't granted the time uh, or the scope to be able to pursue every possible lead that could potentially be followed. Remember, this is not a, a criminal investigation. Sure. It's, a, it's a supplemental background check. So uh, the White House is more or less the client in this type of situation and can really provide the FBI with a set of marching orders about who it wants interviewed and what issues it wants explored or not explored. Well, Friday will probably prove to be another interesting day on Capitol Hill, Nancy. No question. <laughs> Nancy Corbett.